Good day, Grade 10. In today's lesson, we're going to be looking at the electron configuration of atoms. So we've spoken about orbitals before. We've said that electrons move around the nucleus in orbitals and different energy levels. Okay, there are four kinds of orbitals. There are s orbitals, p orbitals, d orbitals, and f orbitals. Luckily for us, we don't have to worry about d orbitals and f orbitals. We just have to worry about these two orbitals, s orbitals and p orbitals. Each orbital can, can contain a maximum of two electrons. And orbitals are regions in space around the nucleus in which there is a 95% probability of finding an electron at any given time. Right, now I'm going to try and draw this for you so you understand what I'm talking about. Let's pretend that this here is the nucleus. And in this nucleus, we've got our protons and our neutrons. Right, now over here, I'm drawing an orbital. Now, some of you might think that I'm a terrible artist, and I am, I admit I am, but I'm not trying to draw a perfect circle at all, and I'm not trying to draw all the lines on top of each other. What you need to understand is that that over there is basically an orbital. An it's an area where you are most likely to find an electron. So, if I had to draw the path of an electron, it might travel this way, and then it might come round, and then it might go along here, and then it might carry on like this, and then, for example, it might get really excited by something that happens outside, and it comes back, but then it loses energy and it goes along, and then it might conform again as per normal. So that is what we mean by the orbital. It's where we are most likely to find our electron. Right, now let's talk a little bit more about the orbital. The first type of orbital you get is an S orbital. Now these orbitals are spherical in shape. Okay, you must remember that atom is three-dimensional, so these orbitals are not circles as it may have looked like I was drawing, they are spherical. Each energy level has an S orbital. This is the energy level, this is the S orbital of the first energy level, this is the S orbital of the second energy level, and this is the S orbital of the third energy level. So you can see that they're getting bigger and bigger as they go along, but every energy level has an S orbital. The nucleus is inside the center of the first S orbital, the one S orbital, and the first energy level is only made up of an S orbital. Right, so let's look at, we're going to look at an example called beryllium, of beryllium. But before we do that, we need to talk about this. First of all, you need to understand that every period on the periodic table is an energy level. So this would be the first energy level, this would be the second energy level, and this would be the third energy level, and so on and so on. Also, the first two blocks we will find our valence electrons, our outer electrons, in the s orbitals. Okay, so these first two blocks represent the s orbitals. Helium is special. Helium is only placed over here because two reasons. One is because its outer electron shell is full, and two because it's a noble gas. But helium should actually kind of be over here because it is also in the s orbital. Everything else, these last six blocks, six groups, are found, the electrons are found in the p orbitals. The electrons are found in the p orbitals, okay? So, hydrogen, s orbital. Helium, also an s orbital. Lithium, s orbital. Beryllium, s orbital. And suddenly we hit the p orbitals. Okay, it seems a little bit confusing right now maybe, but I'll go through it a bit more and you'll see when we do the examples of how this works. Right, so let's look at beryllium. We found it on the periodic table and we got this information. First of all, we found our beryllium and we said that, see that the atomic number is four. So what does that mean? It's got four protons, right? And it also has four electrons, okay? And if we go back for a second, we can see that it is in the second energy level, but it's still in an s orbital. Right, so if we had to draw this, so if let's draw the nucleus, that's one, two, 
three, four protons. From my knowledge that we've done already, we know that that there is a number of protons plus our neutrons, right? So therefore we know that we're going to have five neutrons. I'm just going to draw them into circles. One, two, three, four, five. Remember I said to you I'm a very bad artist, so please don't judge my drawings. Right, now we have our first s orbital. Our first s orbital, right. And our first s orbital is going to have just, well then let me draw the second s orbital before it can change color. And then we've got the second s orbital, second s orbital. Okay, everybody understand? So that is the second s orbital. Now, we know that since this is neutral, we've got four protons, done that, now we need four electrons. But each orbital can only have a maximum of two electrons. So therefore we're going to fill up one, two for the first s orbital and one, two, for the second s orbital. And that's more or less what beryllium looks like. Obviously it's a very, very diagrammatic picture of an atom but it gives you an idea. And please remember that these are spherical. So they're not just circles, they are three-dimensional sphericals. Right, now let's look at our p orbitals. p orbitals are dumbbell or lobed shaped. Now before you start getting confused, please don't think that little electrons travel along like that. So, if they did, they'd be going through the nucleus, which would mean that every time they travel, they would basically be blowing up your atom, which is ridiculous. What is actually happening is that they are still going around the nucleus in a circular motion, but the majority of the electrons are found over here in this bulbous area, and very few times, for very seldom, is it found down here. Okay, it's a little bit difficult to explain and a little bit difficult to understand, but don't worry about it too much. Just understand that your p orbitals are dumbbell shaped or lobe shaped, and the majority of times the electrons are found in these outer lobes. Right, again, there are three p orbitals. There are the p orbitals found in the x axis, there are the p orbitals found in the z axis, and there are p orbitals found in the y axis. So this is what your orbitals look like around a nucleus. But please understand, remember that there's still the s orbital sitting around here as well. Okay, again, from energy level two upwards, there are three. Sorry, there's a set of three p orbitals per energy level. Now. These orbitals are terrible to draw, and as we know from me, I'm a terrible artist, so I struggle with them. Luckily, scientists came up with Afbar diagrams. Now, Afbar diagrams are just a way for us to represent the electron configurations. Arrows are drawn in the blocks or circles to represent the electrons in the atom. Now, I've got a drawing here of blocks. I use blocks, but some textbooks use a circle instead of a block to show the electrons. It's not a big deal, it doesn't matter if we're drawing circles for our orbitals where our electrons are going to fit in or if we draw squares. Now, if we remember we said to you that every period on the periodic table is an energy level. So this here would represent an energy level. So this would be the first period and the first energy level. This would be the second period or the second energy level, third and so on and so on. Okay. Every energy level is going to have an s orbital, we said that, but it's also from the second energy level up, we've got three p orbitals. Now don't get confused. I know this is 2p, but 2 tells us the energy level it's on, p tells us the type of orbital, and here are our three p orbitals, one, two, three. So we've got three p orbitals in level 2. Right, now, what do we need to know? We've mentioned it already, but we need to be more specific, and you need to learn this, unfortunately. So you need to study this, make sure you know this definition. Pauli's exclusion principle says, an orbital can contain a maximum number of two electrons. We've said that already, but we haven't said that they must spin in the opposite direction. We must spin in the opposite direction. And that's important because we are going to draw that in when we draw our Afbar diagrams. Okay, so that's Pauli's exclusion principle. The next rule that we need to learn, also we have to learn it, study it for exams, they like to ask it, Hunt rule. It says no pairing of electrons will take place in a p orbital before all the orbitals contain at least one unpaired electron.
Right, so now let's look at our instructions on how to draw our F-bar diagrams. It may seem a bit much initially, but we'll go through a couple of examples. First, we need to determine the number of electrons the atom has. So we do that using the periodic table, obviously. Then what do we do? We fill the S orbital of the first energy level because with the first two electrons. Then we move on to the second energy level. Okay, We fill the S orbital first. And then we put a one electron, because of this is our Hunt's rule, in each of the three p orbitals in the second energy level. And then if there are any electrons left over, we go again and we'd carry on with it. And you repeat until you've placed all the electrons. So let's do a proper example. Let's look at silicon. So if we look at silicon, we can see it over here. We see that there are 14. I'll go through this properly just now. But do you see that we're in group four and we're in period? three, group four, period three. So if we look at it, there are a couple ways that can help us. We know that we've got 14 protons, which means we have to place 14 electrons. We have to place 14 electrons. It is in group four, period three. Right, so let us draw our F-bar diagram. So first of all, we start at the bottom. And we know we've got 1s, okay, and there are two electrons in our s orbital, so we write 1s2. Right, now, remember what we said with the instructions, we fill this up first. Because they have to be in opposite spin, we draw our first one up and our second one down. That shows that they are in opposite spin. Now we move on to our second s orbital, uh, our second energy level, and we start off with our see, sorry, let's go that way, 2s2, a 2s2, right, in fact, I just want to change this quickly, I'm not happy, okay, so let's just try that again, and go back to the pen, and that, there are two ways that people draw these arrows, I've noticed in some of the textbooks that they drew full arrow, arrows, but what I learned was that you draw opposite half arrows to show opposite spins. So now, so far we've got four electrons, right? We are in the second energy level only, and now we've got our two p orbitals. Now, how many orbitals do we have? We have three p orbitals in each energy level. And remember what they said, we have to fill up one at a time. So we go one, then we go two, then we go three. So that's three. So how many do we have far, so far? We've got four plus three, which is seven. We're still very far away from our 14 electrons. So now we can fill them up again, making sure that they fill in our energy level. Right, we knew that it was in group four, but it's in period three. So we know that we should have a third energy level anyway. So by the way, we haven't finished with this. It's 2p. How many electrons do we have? It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so that's a 2p6. Now let's look at 3s. Okay, so sorry, let's just carry on. That's 3 plus 4, that makes it. So that is 2, 4, 6, 8, and we're on 10 electrons so far. So we've got another 4 electrons to fill in. So we s orbital again. Let's do, and we put a 2 there because we've got 2. Now let's do our 3p orbitals. Again, we've got 3 p orbitals in the third energy level, but we only have, this is now 12 electrons, so now we only have two more electrons to fill in. So by Pauli's extension principle, we've done that, but we've also got Hunt's rule, which says one, two. That's what we have to do. That's it, we're done. And how many electrons are there? Two. So if we had to write this out, we would say it's one is two, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, and then 3p2. So we now know that silicon's electron structure is made up of that. And what we're saying is that the two valence electrons are found in our p orbitals. Right, let's do another example. Let's look at calcium. So now, if you would like, you can stop the video and you can try and do this by yourself. Otherwise, I'm going to carry on and do this example. So we're looking at calcium. We can see it's in group 2, but it is in period 4. Group 2, period 4. Ooh, I said 5 there. Just cross that out. It's 4. don't know what I was thinking. Right, so now, what have we got? Calcium. Calcium, again, 
So we got 20 protons, so we know we have to get to 20 electrons because it's neutral. So again, we start at the bottom. Okay, so this is 1s, and we're going 1s2, first energy level. Let's go up. 2s, going to have 2s2. Now, I'm going to cheat. I know I have to get to period 4, so I'm just going to fill them in. I know I've got 2p6. Because I've been trained well, I'm still going to go 1, 2, 3, and then I'm going to do them in opposite directions, right? Then I'm going to go 3s2, and here's my block, and I'm going to go up, down, and I've got 3p6, okay. Oopsie, I'm rushing and I didn't draw my line in first. Let's try that again. Okay, and there we go. And there's my blocks. Right, now, do you see I'm on 3p6? So now, but we wanted period 4. Period 4 is our fourth energy level. So we've got 4s. And we know it's in group 2, but group 2 is an s orbital, S orbital, and we fold it up, so therefore it is going to be 1, 2, but bef let's just check that, let's just make sure that we've got 20 electrons, so we've got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20 electrons, excellent, so that is how we would draw the Aufbau diagram for calcium, but we could also write out the electron configuration as we did before, so it would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, and 4s2 in this case. Right, and that is exactly how easy it is. So now please go and practice and then try the assessment questions at the end of the section to make sure you know how to do this. Thanks, grade 10s. Have a lovely day.